What are you looking at? Hello, my name is Midmask from the from the YouTube channel Midmask. Today we're talking about are martial classes actually as weak as everyone says they are. This is something that the D&D community has always talked about. Are wizards just overpowered or is every martial class just actually bad and poorly balanced? I'm here to end that debate. Okay, maybe ending the debate is a little bit of a strong word, but I'd like to give my opinion on it because I think I have good opinions. <laughs> I start with the first thing I think about martial classes. Martial classes are very simple at heart, right? You know, the barbarian uses a big axe, big weapons, they smash people, they get mad. That's the general gist of barbarians. And fighters are same thing, sword, shield, maybe two-handed sword, hit things a lot hard. Pretty simple. Wizards, on the other hand. I don't I don't think I have I I don't think I have to tell you. Now, if you're not too familiar with what I'm talking about, generally speaking, at higher levels of Dungeons and Dragons, wizards are incredibly powerful in comparison to fighter, barbarian, monk, etc. The more melee, mundane, focused classes. And my belief about all this is that, let me put these sunglasses down, martial classes aren't actually weak at all. In fact, I think they're quite incredibly powerful. I think it just depends on who your dungeon master is. Let me elaborate on this just a little bit. There are some campaigns that only run rules as written. They do not deviate at all, or very seldomly do, do they do this. They are just the rule books and that's it. And if you run your Dungeons and Dragons campaign that way, rules as written, then yes, I would say wizards and sorcerers, etc., the magic casters are generally just more powerful than, you know, fighter, barbarian, so on and so forth. But if you're like a sane person, <laughs> no, sorry, if you tend to bend the rules a little bit to have a little bit of fun here and there, rules of cool, etc., common kind of etiquette with dungeon masters. Most marshals can get away with considerably more than their magical counterparts. So, uh, an example of this. Say you have just a fighter, rules as written campaign, you know, very uptight. They only have, like, a longsword and they're already level 17 and, you know, not too many magical items. And then you have the wizard who can cast Wish, Fireball, several times. All these other crazy spells. There's obviously a huge power problem here. But if you're like my dungeon master who ran my first ever campaign that I ever played in, I was a martial class. In fact, I was actually a homebrew martial class for the majority of it. But even still, the martial elements began to show themselves and their and their weaknesses. You know, the short range, the lack of damage, fl one flying enemy and you're left staring at it for a couple of rounds. This was countered by the Dungeon Master working with me as the player, uh, introducing these cool things that I could do, like have a strength-based longbow or great bow. If you've ever played Elden Ring, uh, they have something like that huge bow. You need a lot of strength. Strength is a very important part of any martial class to draw it back instead of using dexterity. And this gave a lot more options for me as a martial class. I could do some ranged attacks, or I could do some more up-close attacks. If your dungeon master gives you melee weapons that can help you adapt to different situations, martial classes become immediately more powerful. I think where the strength of a martial class lies is in their arsenal. I think collecting an arsenal is very important for a martial class. Having a bow, having a, like a whip, having a like, halberd, just different things to help you in different situations. And rules as written, maybe this arsenal won't actually help you that much. If your dungeon master is willing to work with you, and you know, really put in the like the work into making a martial class fun and dynamic, so much can change. 
And I realize a lot of this video has a bit of a bias towards the dungeon master doing something about it and not really going by the rules. The rules try to balance wizards by giving them a low health pool. And this seldom actually matters given that many of their spells can help defend them, teleport them, get them out of danger very quickly. So I think, generally speaking, because wizard is just... I keep using wizard, but most of the spellcasters are like this, maybe except for sorcerer. I mentioned sorcerer earlier. But generally speaking, you know, the wizard's always better than the fighter in a lot of situations. I think working with your fighter, your barbarian, just to give them unique things that the wizard cannot do. Like most of their spells can't do it or they'll have a hard time replicating it. That is a good way to help your fighter feel less useless. What I'm trying to really get at here, because this is kind of a more of a rant than a structured video like my previous videos, is that yes, as just rules is written, wizard, sorcerer, bard, they're usually more of a handy tool than most of the marshals. Although, I do think most of the martial classes have a bunch of potential, but it requires the dungeon master and the player to both get extremely creative with how they play the game generally. You, you are going to have to bend rules, you're going to have to change rules, or outright ignore them. And is this a, a problem? A little bit, yeah. I'm hoping that the next edition of Dungeons and Dragons, the one D&D &D thing, I haven't looked too much into it, but perhaps I will and I'll make a video on that, seems quite interesting. But I really do hope there's more of a focus on fighter and, uh, you know, barbarian, etc. To give them more options, like the wizard has. Battlemaster, for example, a fighter subclass, is I think the best subclass. And if I am remembering correctly, Battlemaster has a lot of ways of altering the battlefield, doing all these little tactics and niche little things that is a bit like wizard with their spells. And I think this should be applied to many other martial classes. They should have little, you know, things they can do here and there, little like maybe dodges and, you know, trips and all these other things. I think that should just be included into all like melee centered combat. When I say melee centered, I don't mean melee spell attacks, I just mean swords, daggers, spears, etc. When you think about it, wizard and fighter, they both get their class options. But what wizard really has over fighter is that they get an entire huge sheet of ability, basically just abilities to use, which are their spells, that the fighter, barbarian, whatever, never get, unless like their subclass allows them to get a tiny wee pinch of it. And I think, for as many spells as there is in Dungeons and Dragons, you know, the hundreds of them that exist, why don't the marshals have battle tactics that fill up the same amount of space? Just give them all these crazy, like, little melee abilities that can do, and you can personalize your marshal way more than you normally could. I think Battle Master Fighter is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do with a martial class. I really hope they do more with it in one D&D or whatever the next edition is. I hope this video was insightful in some way. I do realize it was a lot more ramble-like than the majority of my videos so far. But I still hope maybe this gives you some ideas. Just putting this out there of kind of my general take on martial classes. I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything you want me to talk about, you go ahead and leave it in the comments. I've already gotten a few. I have a, a big sticky note right there. <laughs> Can't see it, but it's there, trust me. Of just video ideas, and I'm always going through them and trying to figure out what my next video will be. I'm always looking for suggestions. Thank you for watching. I need to get back to being awesome. I hope to see you in the next video. Adios.